Hello and welcome to Boulder Podcast. Uh, here we tell stories of Brazilian people who took the bold decision of leaving their countries. I'm just translating, live translating here. <laughs> Today I have with me Ross, who is Hello, mostly Brazilian, mostly, mostly Irish. Brazilian. <laughs> I'm going to rip up my Irish passport now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone will be so happy with that. Yeah. Hello, Felipe. Nice to be here. How are you? Hey, Ross. Uh, good to see you. But very good for you to come here. All Thanks for having me. We... I think we talked about maybe doing a podcast together like two years ago. Yeah. But it's life. Yeah. And I'm so happy that I got your invitation and it's great to be here. And also, I had this problem of doing the podcast in English. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I know. I always think about the audience, you know, like, uh, will, will it be yeah. like, uh, will people receive it well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, I remember when I, I was on um, Thales' um, podcast, with Talk and Do yeah. podcasts. He said the same thing. And the first time he ever did a podcast in English, he said he was so nervous. Yeah. He, he was like, even though his, his level of English is really good, he was still really nervous. But he got a good response. And lots of people were kind of curious to hear about how I spoke or yeah. like, the, like a version of Irish English. It was the same with me when I started my Instagram page. I said... Yeah. Why would Brazilian people care to listen to what I have to say when I don't speak Portuguese, you know? Yeah. So you never know. Nothing nothing ventured, nothing gained. In other words, if you don't try something, you never know. But when you started your page, was it already thinking about the Brazilian audience? I, 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 I was forced into starting my page. I was given no option. Yeah. My, um, uh, I, had, I had two really good friends of mine. And when I started my Instagram page, I just had a private Instagram page, like one just to put up pictures of me and my my sisters or my best friends or having beers in the pub yeah. and on, on uh, the beach. Yeah, on the beach. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Borough Beach. <laughs> But, um, and that was my only Instagram yeah. because I was doing videos with the guys from E Dublin from about early 2018. Yeah. And I didn't start talk to Ross until the end of 2019. So it was almost two years. Like I just have my own private page because and there's because my, my two friends were saying to me, why don't you start a page where you're talking about Irish history? Because you work as a tour guide already. And maybe the people who follow you on E-Dublin might be interested by that. And I said, that's weird. That That's a very niche market yeah. because so many of them are native Portuguese speakers. Why would they be interested in what I have to say in English? Sure, I might get a few followers, but I didn't think... In, you know, in, in June of 2023, that I'd be on nearly 50,000 followers without even oh really trying. Yeah. I don't really try. I mean, I, I just put up, I put up stuff and, I, and some of it goes semi-viral and that's great. You go with the algorithm. Yeah. I, I, um, But a lot of people, yeah. I'm sure, so everyone comes here, well, most 90% of mm. Brazilians come, come here as a student. Yeah. And then they start learning English mm -hmm. and it's important for them to sure. have like a... Uh, to follow someone who is talking about Irish, uh, Irish yeah, history. a reference or something. Yeah, and they know you from E Dublin. Mm. You know that that's true. I, I think maybe the E Dublin thing helped a lot because my face wasn't as strange. Yeah, I was a familiar face with these people already, so I wasn't just this red-haired guy just speaking with an Irish accent, and they're like, okay, yeah. because um, I think that helped me a lot. Yeah, for sure, and. Uh, The day that I knew that things were changing was when I visited Brazil for the second time at the beginning of 2020, just before the oh, pandemic before started. Yeah, I actually, I was in Sao Paulo when everything went crazy yeah. and I had to get a flight out of there quick. But I was in Rio Grande do Sul at one of my best friends' cities, a tiny little city called Casa Pava do Sul. If there's anybody watching in Casa Pava, Casa Pava. do Sul today, yeah. yeah. And he, <laughs> the guy was sitting, I was having a beer and this guy walks up to me and he said, I was watching you on YouTube today. <laughs> he said, and he said to me, yeah. I can understand if you're in Curitiba. I can understand if you're in Rio de Janeiro. What the f are you doing in Casa Pava de Sol? <laughs> so that's yeah. when I knew that things were crazy. Wow. When I was in Brazil and someone in Casa Pava de Sol was like, oh, hi. Yeah, but I want to know a little bit more about sure. how your story with Brazilians started because... Yeah, no problem. It must be interesting. Yeah, yeah it, it yeah. is kind of crazy. Yeah. It's, but, it's by accident. Everything's by accident. 
All right, good. I, I know there is some stuff there, but before we start, let me switch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm switch to Portuguese because I, I would do the the ads here, and I, I would try to, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Galera, vocês que estão, oh, who is uh, listening to this in English? We'll come back to English uh, very soon. Galera, vocês estão escutando aí? É, eu quero pedir o like, certo? Deixa aí o like neste episódio. Se você não conhece o Bold SB aqui por causa do Ross, aproveita e se inscreve, porque tem muitas histórias de brasileiros aqui na Irlanda e em outros países da Europa também. Quero agradecer os nossos patrocinadores que estão aqui na tela do Boulder, que são a Prática Consultoria, a Skill Ireland Training e a BIM Consulting. Então hoje eu quero destacar aí o apoio da Skill Ireland Training, para você que veio estudar inglês aqui na Irlanda, está precisando entrar naqueles trabalhos, né, nos, nos jobs que tem aqui na Irlanda, então você precisa de cursos profissionalizantes aqui, é, entre em contato com a Skill Ireland Training, faça o seu curso aí de Manual Handling, o curso de Food Safety, caso você vai trabalhar num restaurante, é, então tem vários cursos aí, tem mais de 20 cursos lá na Skill Ireland Training, então é, os, o endereço está aí, ó, no QR Code na tela, é skillireland.com, é, o que mais? Quero agradecer também a Prática Consultoria para você que está vindo aqui para a Irlanda ou para 28 países aí da Europa. How many European EU countries are there? Do you know? Oh, how many countries in the European Union? Yeah. Oh, you got me there. There's 50 countries in Europe, but no, how yeah, many no. are in the European Union? Well, I'm not too over, sure. Over 20. Over yeah, 20. yeah, definitely over yeah. 20. Yeah. Então, mais de 20 países aí que você pode morar com seu passaporte europeu, beleza? Então... Tem as raízes italianas aí, entre em contato com a Prática Consultoria, não sabe por onde começar, e olha as informações no Instagram da Prática, e assim que fechar uma consultoria, fala que veio pelo Boulder, que assim você dá essa moral para a gente também. Beleza? Quero agradecer também a BIM Consulting, para você que quer abrir uma empresa aqui na Irlanda, ó, a gente tem, a gente falou aqui ó, de passaporte, galera que vem com passaporte, mas tem pessoas também que querem abrir uma empresa aqui na Irlanda, querem empreender, então, é, não sabe por onde começar, é, entre em contato aí com a BIM Consulting, que eles vão te ajudar aí nesse processo, porque a gente sabe que é, abrir empresa no nosso país é difícil, quando está em outro país também é muito complicado. Então, olha aí, é BIM Consulting. Os endereços estão aí na tela, o QR Code e o link na descrição. Fale sempre que veio pelo Boulder, porque assim você ajuda a gente também. <risos> hum. Ross understood everything. I almost did. Yeah? Basically, uh, yeah, the, the, I got the bit about food handling, or the food handling, Menu food handling. <laughs> handling and food safety, <laughs> and <laughs> Italian citizenship yeah. and passports, and I, I know that's, that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. That's uh, a vital thing, and I think so, uh, there's so many of my friends from Brazil who, when, when they started off on their journey here, it was intercambio and then dipping their feet in the water to see if they had any Italian blood and yeah. then they, they started the process. And it's a pity when people want to stay, they have the skills to stay, yeah. they, they work hard, mm -hmm. they do everything they can, yeah. but they can't stay because they don't have, uh, you know, like an EU citizenship. Yeah, exactly. And it's not, it's not even like, you know, where there's could be an option like what they have for the USA where there's like a specialist skill or you could be sponsored by a company or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's possible, but who has thousands and thousands of euros to do that? Especially if you're an intercambio student, you know, yeah. you're lucky if you have a few hundred euro together some weeks yeah. rather than thousands. So it could be difficult. Paying the rent. Yeah. And yeah. Living. Well, yeah. Living. And drinking. You know. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> part, Water. Part of the culture. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. We, we're learning. We are learning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, do you, uh, Irish people, do they get uh, annoyed when we talk about the drinks, the drinking and stuff? In general, in general. I don't think so. No, no I don't think so. I mean, uh, you know, as, 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 as much as like we, we'd like to try and deny it, but like we, we, alcohol was a big part of our culture for many years. Um, but this generation of Irish young people, they're very Instagram yeah. conscious. And a lot of them now are more about protein shakes <laughs> than <laughs> sitting in the pub all night, you know? There's just, there's just a different generation, but 
But it's because the 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 Guinness is very expensive now. Mm. Well, but it it is expensive, Felipe. The crazy thing is that um, before the pandemic, we were all having house parties. We're like everything is too expensive. The beer is too expensive. Since the pandemic has ended, any time I've been in the city centre, nearly every pub has crowds of people outside. It's almost like we're all saying to each other, we don't care how much the beer costs anymore. Yeah. Let's just go crazy. You know, we have one life. Let's go crazy. Yeah. It's almost like Ireland has rediscovered its um, its drinking shoes. You know, yeah. they put on the drinking shoes again. It's time to go. But no, we don't get angry. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, we recognize it's been ingrained in our culture for years. And sure, some people never drink. Um, my dad, my mother, they they might have had a few beers when they were younger, but I never never seen any of my parents, either of my parents, drunk or even tipsy or anything. So not everybody is the same, you know. Yeah. I I know a lot of families in Ireland that are very healthy and very clean living. It's just it's the stereotype, you know. But at the same time, no, I don't think we get angry. It's just we know it's part of our history, but it's what we do with it after that. Yeah, there's this Simpsons. Yeah, you know, yeah, and Family Guy. <laughs> oh, they yeah, landed yeah, Family yeah, Guy, family guy. on the runway. And yeah. There's the bottles. Sure, oh sure, my God, of course. Yeah. They could have easily had a had a Family Guy sketch with like Copacabana, and you're True. all in bikinis drinking caipirinhas and talking about soccer. You know, it's it, it is a stereotype. But sometimes you, ha I've I've actually found myself the older I get. You have to laugh at it a little bit as well. You know, it's, you have to be a good sport. I agree with you. Yeah. But some Brazilians, they get, they, that Simpsons episode yeah. in Brazil, yeah. it, it was banned. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> And this was a long time ago. You in know? Ireland, the Irish one is our favorite one. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it gets the one with the, what was it, the beer? Hey, yeah. We laugh at that because we just think it's so ridiculous that that's yeah. what people think about us, you know, but it's just funny. Yeah. For me, it's funny. Yeah. For me too. <laughs> Now I'm Irish. Now I you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. Yeah. Did you get your passport? Yeah. You have your Irish passport? Yeah, now I am. Oh my God. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Thank When you. When did you get your Irish passport? Recently. I, I got the citizenship in December. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Yeah. So you have the lovely harp and you have the cliffs of Moher in your passport. I love it, you know. <laughs> no, first... first uh, I took my first trip with the passport, with the Irish passport yeah. recently, and uh, it's amazing to beat the queue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, yeah. But to be honest, it was <laughs> the queue. Yeah. was shorter for the non-EU. Yeah, or it's like yeah. if you get, you know, Ryanair, they have priority and non-priority. Yeah, it's the biggest load of nonsense ever. <laughs> yeah. Because okay, you pay priority, mm. you sit down on the seat. Yeah. And it could be like on the aisle, yeah. but if there's someone who's non-priority and their window seat, you still need to stand up anyway and let yeah. these people pass you. So it's 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 such a publicity stunt from Ryanair, yeah. which which they're very good at. But it's similar to that. The yeah. Cues, yeah. <laughs> no, I I just paid for priority because of the suitcase. You know? Oh yeah. Oh the, yeah. Yeah. The wheelie one. The overhead one. Yeah. 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 Oh, when I go Ryanair, Philippe, I just socks and underwear and t-shirts just put into a bag and it fits underneath my seat i'm gone yeah <laughs> the single life just just put yeah. like three days of t-shirts into my bag and i'm gone Ryanair was a good irish invention i think But, yeah Ryanair was yeah <laughs> crying air sometimes we call it because you never stop crying yeah we it. get pissed off yeah we, sure we end up flying yeah i mean my my dad passed away uh 16 years ago but i always remember he said to me you know People complain about Ryanair. People say this, they say that. But people will still buy the tickets and it's go. still the way to go. And the way Michael O'Leary, the chief executive, always said it was, well, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. Yeah. And I would like to be more loyal to Aer Lingus, who are the national Irish airline, yeah. but they're always more expensive. So. No, my problem is that it's uh, it seems like Ryanair has a monopoly, you know, because everyone, you everywhere you want to fly... Yep. They they have a direct flight there and the other ones mm. have like have to be bouncy you know, <laughs> yeah. around yeah. Yeah, or yeah, or like you see the thing about it is a lot of these smaller cities 
it's almost like the Lewis line in Dublin. These neighbourhoods have benefited from having the Lewis right beside them. It's the same way that Ryanair have helped these smaller cities to develop and grow. Now, mm. apart from Paris, if you land in Paris Beauvais. with Ryanair, Beauvais, it's like... Horrible. Yeah, two, Horrible. two Three gates. hours. Yeah. And you're sitting on a bus for two hours going, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. No, that's horrible. It never, is. never buy this yeah. plane ticket to yeah. Paris by Ryanair. Yeah. No. And a 12 euro baguette. Yeah. <laughs> Never. And then it's you've got to pay 15 euros for that bus. Yeah, that's right. So it's almost like hidden charges. Yeah. But um, hmm. but I think we were talking about... Yeah, how uh, how, yeah. how did you... Mm. How, uh, Start. Like, how no, how how did you become well-known in the Brazilian community? Was just because of it doubling? How, how did mm. it all start? It? Mainly. Yeah. Oh. So let's see. Well, first of all, E Dublin wasn't my introduction to people from from Brazil at all. Back in two thousand and four, I I I, uh, I went like traveling around Europe on a train with like a couple of my best Irish friends, and we stayed <clears throat> in a youth hostel. And there was a guy there from Brazil, and uh, we became good friends. And of course, we the obvious thing we were talking about football, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's so funny because I actually met him in Dublin. Four years ago, he said, Ross, I'm in Dublin. Let's go for a Guinness. We met in the Foggy Jew on Dame Street. And I'm yeah. thinking, wow, this is this guy I met like in 2004. <laughs> Long story short, 2008, I think it was. You remember MySpace, social media, yeah. MySpace? Well, I had a MySpace page. And I got a message one day off this girl called Clarissa. And uh, she said to me, hey, I seen your profile and just you look you, know, you look like a nice person. I'm going to move to Dublin soon from Brazil. And I remember thinking, a person from Brazil going to Dublin? Why? That's so weird. <laughs> what? Why would anybody from Brazil come here? And this was 15 years ago. And right enough, Clarissa came to Dublin and we became really good friends. And we're still in touch. We were only talking yesterday. Yeah. And um, I met her when I was in Sao Paulo again, um, just before the pandemic. And she's a mother now and she's she's an amazing girl. She's brilliant. So that was my first two introductions. <clears throat> and then I play drums. I play in a rock band. And my old band, Crafty Fuzz, we used to play some concerts around Ireland. And we, we used to play some shows with a guy who I used to work with many, many years ago. And his name was Stuart. And uh, Stuart says, hey, let's let's play some gigs together. Let's play some shows. Yeah, no problem. And next thing you know, we're playing some gigs. And the drummer was a guy from Brazil. Yeah. And his name just so happened to be Eduardo Ginsanchi. Oh, the... <laughs> From me, Dublin. So from Edu. Yeah, Edu from me, Dublin. Oh my God! So me and that's how I met Edu. Was we, we were playing our two rock bands were playing shows together. So I I, yeah. I, I didn't know a lot about your story, but yeah. uh, I thought you were like a, a teacher, an no. English teacher, and no. then became not at all understood a everything. Smelly drummer <laughs> <laughs> who just started eating food on his friend's YouTube channel. Yeah, but, but what happened was I was on. Um, I had Edu on Facebook and he was just, we were just like Facebook friends for a long time. And then I, I was having a beer in Dublin one day and I checked my event invitations of Facebook and I seen Brazilian Day event, Wigwam, Abbey Street. And I'm thinking, who? Because I was in Australiano that day yeah. having a beer, just watching. The only reason I went there was because the, the football screen was so big and I wanted to see the, 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 the Ireland game. And so I said, oh, who cares? Like Abbey Street is only a 10 minute walk away. So I walked from Australiano Woolshed over to Wigwam and I walked in and it reminded me of a scene from a cowboy movie. You know, when, you know, when the stranger comes into town yeah. and he opens the two doors yeah. and the piano is playing and everybody just goes, it stops. Yeah. <laughs> it was like 200 Brazilian people just staring at me going, who is this gringo? Yeah, who's this gringo? And I'm like, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and uh, I'm just there having a beer at the bar, mm. supporting my friend because Edu was up on stage and they were like doing like, you know, food competitions and beer competitions. But, but have you ever, have you, had you ever heard of E Dublin at the um, time? I, I heard of E Dublin because Stuart, who Edu was in a band with, said, oh yeah, like the Brazilian guy who's playing drums with me, like he has this YouTube channel, it's doing really well. And we put like one of our music videos 
on his YouTube channel and we got like 10,000 views. Nice. And back in the day, if, yeah. if you're in a rock band, you got 10,000 views of your music video. It was like, whoa, you're famous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So that's how, I, that's how I first heard of E Dublin, but I didn't really quite know how big it was until the day I walked into Wigwam that time. And I seen, it's like about 150, 200 Brazilian people. It was crowded. Yeah. And I was at the bar and, and Edu was speaking in Portuguese and then he says in English, okay, so we need three Irish people on stage and we need three Brazilian people on stage and we're going to have like a beer drinking competition. And I always remember the line. Beer drinking competition? Yeah, beer drinking competition. Yeah. So you said that. Yeah, have a good yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and Edu seen me at the bar and he said, Ross, you're Irish, come up here. And I'm like, oh, you bastard. <laughs> like he put the, the arrow on my face and I'm yeah. like, oh God, okay, I'm so embarrassed. So I walked up on stage and there's three Irish people. One of them was actually um, Taran, a guy who I, 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 he plays in a band called Boy Curious. Actually, they're really, yeah. really good. And the other Irish person was a girl called Jess, Jess Glynn. Yeah, and Jess I know, does, I... was doing videos with E Dublin for many years. Lovely girl, absolutely crazy energy. She's brilliant. And uh, <laughs> she, she turned around to me and uh, when we're on the stage, she said, Ross, I've never drank a pint of beer before. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And she demolished the Brazilian girl that she was up against. It was her first time ever drinking a beer. She went, oh. <laughs> and then there was me and another guy that I was competing with. His name was Andre. And I'm still friends with him. Yeah. Uh, but like, we, went, we drank it back at the same time and we called it a draw. That's what we say. Yeah. And then what happened was, that was great. I had a good night. A couple of weeks later, I started getting messages on Facebook or something from people saying, ha oh, oh, you're the guy from that video on YouTube. You're really funny. And I said, what, what, video? what video on YouTube? <laughs> so E Dublin being E Dublin, they film everything. There was a little GoPro set up <laughs> on the side of the stage that I didn't see. I just thought that's a bit of fun, me drinking a beer and then everybody forgets about it and goes home. But this time it was uploaded onto YouTube and there's me going oh, oh my God. and then I, I'm reading things like you know essa huivo e muito engraçado and I'm like going on to Google Translate oh that's a good thing okay yeah. okay that's a good thing He's, they're not calling me an idiot so <laughs> it's like, well, were you afraid before yeah I was, like, I, I was like I was kind of self-conscious because I'm kind of thinking you're drinking a few beers on a night out yeah. and you, you don't really you don't really know 100% of all the things that go onto a video. You know? yeah, that's and that's what happened. And then f nothing happened for six months. Absolutely nothing happened. And then I was invited by Matt and Edu to do a acai video yeah. in Wigwam. And I thought again, I'd be, I'd be probably eating in front of an audience, but it wasn't. It was just down in the basement and, and, and recording it that just way. Just for the video. Just for the video, yeah. And then by that stage, I'd started, because of those that YouTube video from before, I started to get to know more Brazilian people, actually, in Dublin. And what happened was I, I knew enough Brazilian people that I was able to go to Brazil for a holiday for the very first time. And I was finishing my old job anyway. Yeah. And I said, I, I, know I'm in a, I need to do something new. My head has gone crazy. I, I need to do something new in my life. I'm getting really, really bored. So... There was a friend of mine who lived in Curitiba, and then there's a friend of mine who lived in Rio Grande do Sul, and there's a friend of mine who lived in Rio de Janeiro, and they're like, well, you can't come to Brazil and not visit me. Well, you can't come to Brazil and not visit me. So I had somewhere to stay, and I went on a crazy adventure for like originally two months and then three months. And then when I came back home, the, the, the E Dublin videos really started to take off, and I was doing a new video every week. I was like a new video was being uploaded every single week. Man, it was this... Wigwam and the old Bernard Shaw and all these places. and Yeah. So you spent three months in Brazil. Yeah. Oh my God. I needed it. Yeah. I wanted an adventure. And the fact that because I was getting to know so many Brazilian people at that time, I just thought, well, they're telling me about how cool this place is. So it's time to see for myself. But do you think we normally say Brazil is cool or we say, oh, Brazil is violent, Brazil is this um, it's, it depends on who I talk to. Some some Brazilian people will say they'll, they'll think it's like paradise and nothing is wrong. You know, oh, everything is amazing. We've the best this. We've the what I've noticed with Brazilian people is they love saying the best. Yeah. I'm from the best state. Yeah. Um, we have the best food. It's very competitive, a lot more than Ireland. Yeah, I you, see. you never hear someone from Dublin saying to someone from Galway, "Oh, we have the best Guinness," or "I'm from the best." Place. So I'm like, 
man, come on. No, I'm, I'm from yeah. Bahia, Salvador. Yeah, yeah. northeast. Yeah. So, yeah, so we say we have the best carnival of course, in yeah. Brazil. Yeah. But that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you, you... <laughs> I'm sure it is. But, it, <laughs> but, but like, see, for me, maybe it's an Irish thing. Yeah. Whether something's the worst or the best, it's all subjective, you know. I know, so, I know. But it, it almost kind of sounds like someone is like a salesman. It's like, it's like, man, it's cool. It's all good. Like, I, because... Because Brazilian people will always say to me, what's your favorite place in Brazil? I say, I don't have anywhere. I love the countryside of Rio Grande do Sul. I love the fact that Florianopolis looks like a like a like a like a level from Super Mario Kart. Yeah. I, I love that mm. Curitiba is Chuva Chiba. And I love that Rio de Janeiro is a big crazy load of rainforest nature and mm. craziness in between. So I, I just love a mixture of everything. So that's what no generally Brazilian people would be different. Some would say this is the best, that's the best, or is it dangerous? It depends on who you're talking to. It's the same if you're talking to an Irish person about Ireland. They'll say, oh, I hate the place, or oh, I love the place, or it's it's all subjective. Yeah, sometimes people say, oh, why are you here, you know? Why are you not in Brazil? Like, it's very sunny there, very, you know, like a good weather. Yeah, but but I, but I do know from, from knowing you guys for many years, weather isn't enough to keep you <laughs> yeah. in, in a country or to maybe develop what you want to do with your life as well. That's true. You know, That's true. like if, if that was the case, then everybody from every person from every country with good weather would just stay where they are for the rest of their life. If That's that was true. the case, you That's know. True. But yeah, like, uh, uh, no, but you are involved in the mm. Brazilian community. So you understand a lot I about do. what we go through. I do. What we, a lot. Yeah. Every day. Like, and I'm so relaxed now, even. I remember during the pandemic, Things were crazy, like, you know, like, uh, and there was lots of people who'd, who'd arrived from Brazil to Ireland for the first time at the start of the pandemic, and they they never got to experience the real Ireland yet. Yeah. They got to experience the, the crazy Ireland, you know, uh, but then when everything started to open up, they began to see what our country is all about. Music festivals, food festivals, road trips, um, pub culture, rock concerts, you know, yeah. uh, museums, all that good stuff. I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, the good stuff is out there. It's just up to you whether you want to be bothered to yeah. discover it for yourself. You yeah, know. but Ireland is amazing. Man. Yeah. I mean, I it complain. Is. Of course, about... I complain. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I complain a lot yeah. about Ireland, but sure. I like it, you know. Of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't be living here. Yeah, like there's no, no, world, no, no place in the world is heaven. Yeah. I mean, there'd be something wrong if we didn't complain about certain things in certain countries. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so. But uh, are you sick of trying Brazilian food? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of being asked about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm definitely not. So, geez, I'll never turn down amazing food. But no, I, I'm, I, I sometimes I get a bit tired of the, of the stereotype. I think there's some people who think that I wake up in the morning and I sleep in a ordain me progresso like duvet <laughs> and I just like listen to oh, I, yeah, oh, wah, oh. Wah, and I'm, I have like a Caiprinia in the morning and I have like a Po de Queijo yeah. and uh, I'm obsessed with Brazil. I'm really not. I love yeah. Brazil. It's, it's, it's my honorary second country. Yeah. But I love every country. You know what I mean? It's just, I always use the analogy if, E Dublin was Polish. Mm. I'd be. I would have been trying Polish food, or I would have been going. You know, it. If or like uh, New Zealand or India, yeah. whatever. It just so happened that it was Brazil. But at the same time, there's a lot of connections in the last few years as well between the various people I've met. But no, I. I, I don't mind eating the food. <laughs> it's the. Um, <laughs> it's the. It's the questions I, I used to get on my Instagram page. What's your favorite food? Yeah. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? And I'm like, man, I have no idea. It's just food, man. I tried everything. Everything's yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Everything's good, yeah. yeah. I hate everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my quick answer is I always say to them, I just don't like hunger. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, now go stuff for me. <laughs> no, because I, like people don't think about, like when you see a travel vlogger. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, this guy always travels. No, he traveled mm. once and then he yeah. goes back and then he traveled again. Mm. And it's the same with you. You're not like no. recording, everyday recording Jesus, a no. video. <laughs> I haven't recorded a reel in five weeks, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm busy. Yeah. I, I, I work five days a week. Like I, 
I got a message even on my Instagram today and someone said to me, um, oh, when I come to Ireland, is it okay if I talk to you? <laughs> if you find me? Like, <laughs> what the? Is it okay if you talk to me? Yeah. Like, I, 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 like, mm. I don't, I think people get this weird idea just because I'm in this Instagram thing or the YouTube thing that I must be some sort of celebrity and I'm really not. <laughs> I wake up at seven o'clock every morning and yeah. queue for getting a cup of coffee and queue for getting on the train and run into work and people are like, hi Ross, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, oh they my God, care. oh my God, it's the guy with the Instagram page. <laughs> that That's why, that, like, you know, the whole Instagram thing, I, I, fi I find myself very awkward about the whole thing because I look on, on different pages and it's great that other people are doing what they're doing and they're very much about buy this and we're going to sponsor this and guys click all these links this <laughs> is amazing and I'm like um um so Irish history and uh, you know I'm just not as I don't feel like a salesman yeah. you know like I feel really awkward about this whole Instagram thing but it's good but I, I'm learning to work it in my own way. Not what people expect me to be. They, they, they think I'm this walking person, like walking down Grafton Street going, hi guys, I'm filming here at the moment and it's amazing. There's like flowers and there's music. Ah, you know? <laughs> no, but, but the way you talk yeah. already, mm. you know, even here before we started filming, like it's already animated. Yeah. So you have some energy. I already. do. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to yeah. go into this character and no. start, you know, it's me. I, that's me. Yeah. That's yeah. me anyway, Felipe. Yeah. And as well as that, my full-time job, I work as a tour guide. Yeah. I work for a uh, big bus. Shout out to my friends in big bus. That's the so these... hop on, hop off buses in Dublin. Oh, yeah. Nice. The brown the and brown yellow one. buses. Yeah. Brown yeah. one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if ever you guys see me running around, yeah, jump on the bus. But, um, so that's I my job. Say, I will say I'm a friend of Ross. Yeah, then, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Click the link down below. Just walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But seriously, hop yeah. On. Yeah, hop on, hop yeah. off. That's my full-time job. Yeah. Like, I've made zero euro from all this internet stuff, like, you know. Um, so. But it's... But it's fun. Yeah. It is but a lot you, of fun. you like doing it. I, I do like doing it when I have the energy to do it. Yeah, I, I actually do like doing it. Yeah. But, but I'm just not one of those people where it's... Oh, people haven't seen my face for two days. I better start talking into yeah. the camera for like three minutes, just talking about a bunch of bull, you know? Yeah. I do like doing it, but like my, my page has changed a lot as well. It, it was very much geared, like my very first reels just had Portuguese subtitles yeah. because it was for like a Brazilian audience as my, as my friends wanted me to do. But <clears throat> I slowly but surely, I started to realize that there was other people that were moving to Ireland as well that were, that were interested in my, it wasn't just for Brazilian people. It was like, I just um, noticed that like, I got a photograph. I, I stopped for a photograph on Saturday. There's uh, a guy from Spain and uh, two girls from Spain. And they're like, oh, you're Ross from the thing. I'm thinking, wow, is someone from Spain stopping me for to get a, a selfie. Like that, that's yeah. really nice. But it's good. It's it's you, wonderful. You, you, lots of people from India as well are following me. Like lots of people who are working in IT now in India, they're now working, living in Dublin, and they're wanting to find out more about Irish life, and they're following me too. And um, no, it it is. It's really nice that way because when I first started the whole thing, there's a lot of misinformation about Ireland, or, or just too much of a sales pitch about Ireland. It was all about the Temple Bar pub mm -hmm. and the Cliffs of Moher. And Guinness storehouse, yeah, Guinness storehouse, and slow motion pictures of people like cheers and like with shamrocks, and they're like, yeah, and it's very, it's a, it's a lovely, bright, yeah, lovely yeah. day, you know, yeah. no, no, no cuts. rain, <laughs> and there's it in the background, and I'm like, yeah, guys, but you know our history. Do you remember that there was this leprechaun on the? <laughs> Some pet, uh, in uh, Trinity College, in front of Trinity yeah, College. Yeah, I remember, yeah. This guy's not there anymore. He's, he's I gone. I forgot about him now until you you, you <laughs> mentioned him. <laughs> Shit. Mr. Leprechaun, man, are you out there? Hello. Yeah. 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 I forgot about him. Yeah, and also the Molly Malone statue used to be at the bottom of Grafton yeah. Street as well. They moved. You had to move her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because they were um doing the Lewis tracks. Yeah. So the way the Lewis goes around Nassau Street, so they had to move her further on. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, no, it's interesting, man. It's an interesting existence. Yeah, you see, you see I'm here for 12 years and uh, yeah. I've seen a lot of change. Not a lot. But of course some. you have. But Absolutely. Little, yeah. You're here long enough to justify yeah. it. I don't know. Before, uh, there was a, a Lewis from the Stephen's Green to, you know, south. And that was it. And that was it. And then it, it broke. Yeah. <laughs> then you had to walk along yeah. Abbey, Abbey Street. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Like you, you were here when there was one Lewis line. And then they decided that there was no intersection, so they better start linking up the lines for the first time. <laughs> but it was nice, yeah. Like, like Dublin has changed a lot. Like, when I was a kid, growing up in Rush, which is a very rural part of Dublin, um, when, if we went into Dublin city centre, that was like a big day out. It was like a big event. It was like, wow, we can go shopping in, in the Ilac centre. You know, there was no Jervis. There was no... Um, even this part of Dublin, there was no City West, there was no uh, Liffey Valley, there was no Square in Talla. None of these places had been even built yet. It was St. Stephen's Green, Ilac Centre, mm, and Kulak. There was like Northside Shopping Centre. That was about it. But from Rush, mm. did you get on the bus to get into We, we drove. Like My, my, drove, my mother okay. or father were, were driving, yeah. But, okay. but we still had the exact same transport that we had back in the 80s. M50? Yeah. Did you have no, one? M50 wasn't even wasn't out there yet, no. It was, it was, it was the M1. Two, yeah. two hours? <laughs> yeah, it felt like it. <laughs> well, like when I was a kid, I remember we went from Dublin to Cork um, when I was eight years old. And it took us seven hours to get to Cork. Seven hours? Mm -hmm. No, man. Yep. But oh, by by car? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, we or went through every village. Yeah. Now, we, well, we stopped for food, so maybe it would have been six hours. But no, even I know, still. But it's very, yeah. very long. I remember. I, I've got memories of going through every town from Dublin to Kildare to Offaly to Tipperary, mm. Waterford into Cork. Um, see, Ireland started to change in the 1990s. We had the quickest growing economy in Europe called the Celtic Tiger. Yeah. Big construction sector, big pharmaceutical sector, big healthcare sector. And also things like river dance started to happen in Ireland. Our football teams started to qualify for tournaments. So we started to get some confidence in ourselves. Who was responsible for this change? Um, or, or what was responsible? Like I, it's, it's hard to tell really, but I do know like whatever about the 1990s, but from the multinationals arriving here, initially Gateway, then Motorola, and now TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, all having their European headquarters in Ireland, it was because the Irish government offered generous corporate rates of tax. Yeah. So that's why all these companies say they love coming to Ireland. They don't have to pay any tax. <laughs> like, oh, I love Ireland. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's good for two great jobs here. Absolutely. Yeah. But we're, we're, we've always been very worried for many years as well because we kind of think, okay, it's great that these companies are here. But you can't rely on the IT industry all the time. It can be very yeah. practical, like, like the bubble, can, the can balloon burst, can yeah. burst very quickly. And I, I'm sure you remember last year, you heard about TikTok and Facebook were starting to lay off people. Yeah. And we were thinking in Ireland, oh, this is the beginning of the, you know, the domino, the, the cards going woo, all the way down. But it, it seems to have... Leveled off. It seems to be doing okay. I, I hope I, so. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> I really do too. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking recently about uh, during during the lockdown, I was doing some digital marketing courses and stuff like that because I think like after starting my social media page, I said, well, that is a form of digital marketing. Yeah, yeah of course. So I, I'm actually thinking about maybe doing more of that and maybe going for my national tour guide badge, which means once you have a national tour guide badge, you can work anywhere all over Ireland. You can do private work, all that kind of stuff. So who knows what might happen? In, in, Is this yeah. also uh, regulated? So you yeah, have like it's regulated by um, the Irish Tourist Board. Yeah, yeah, the, the governmental. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how are you seeing the tourism now in Ireland? So is it back to where it was before the no. pandemic? Um, no, no, it's... It's not back to pre-pandemic levels, but at the same time, it's not going to be until the next couple of weeks until we know, because the kids are only starting to finish for their school holidays now around okay. Europe and around the world. So that's when we're going to start to see um, things change a little bit and a lot, lot busier on the buses. They Spanish, also. They Spanish kids? Yeah, the yeah. Italians? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> 
apart from that, like we've got the USA kids, we have the Canadian kids, we've got like South African kids. Like, I mean, I've I've got every nationality that I can think of I've met this year so far in Dublin. And I can imagine when the school holidays finish around the world, yeah. or sorry, when the school term finishes, it's going to get even more and more. Look, I'm from the interior, the countryside of Bahia. Mm. And uh, I know a group from there is coming here. He's going to spend two weeks here in Ireland. So imagine if they are coming from Bahia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're to, in for, uh, to here. That means, uh, you know, imagine people from yeah. Europe. You know, they're going to... They're in for a shock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's a good culture shock sometimes. I think you need a culture shock. I think sometimes we, we need to just get out of the comfort zone. Yeah. Sometimes the comfort zone is amazing. And after we explore and travel, we miss our home comforts. But yeah. but getting out of the comfort zone is also important as well. You know, I, yeah. I think. But yeah. How... I think... We Brazilians, we stay a lot in our comfort comfort mm. zone, like speaking Portuguese all the time, mm. only with Brazilian friends. Yeah. Well, the way you look at that is it's up to the individual person, really. And I can understand it. I mean, I, I used to say that a couple of years ago. It's like, ah, you know, if you're coming over here, maybe try. But Irish people did the exact same thing. When we had like one million people dying at the side of the road like uh, for in the 1840s because of uh, you know the the potato famine yeah. and a few other reasons we could be here until christmas talking about the other reasons um we went to england and canada the usa australia all these countries and we lived in our own little communities and we brought our traditional dishes you know like our stews and our casseroles and our meats and our and and and, and soup dishes and we brought our our music as well so I, I think I, I can't really, I know there's a lot to be said, like integration is very important, but at the same time, I don't think people who just kind of stay in their own little group should be like um, um, chastised or be the enemy either. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a lot more like accepting of that now. I kind of think, well, hang on, any, any nationality that's ever gone around the world, of course they're going to stick with their yeah, own. Yeah, we're going to stay in some groups. It's, I mean... Yeah, it's it's, it's familiarity. Easier. It's it's human nature. Yeah. Like, when I was younger, what was the first thing I used to do when I used to go to a different country? Where's the Irish bar? <laughs> the Irish pub. So, you know, <laughs> I'd be a complete hypocrite yeah. if I was to say, how dare you not come here and not... But, but at the same time, yes, there should be a lot more integration. I think sometimes there's just... There, there's, there's too much stuff th thrown around online where, where some some Brazilian people are almost afraid of talking to Irish people because you hear about these things about you know teenagers throwing eggs at people and it's like mm. oh Ireland is so dangerous there's teenagers throwing eggs uh eggs is yeah. that seriously eggs is all you have to worry about like yeah it's yeah. like because they have um, amnesia I think yeah 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 <laughs> they yeah, yeah, yeah. what's like in Brazil exactly yeah it's like come on like when of course, I, I don't want to be yeah. thrown an egg, you of know? Of course. But, uh, yeah, like I had two eggs today already. I'm not hungry anymore. Yes. You know? it's like, Especially like, if they're rotten. Man, yeah. I was in Rio de Janeiro, and I literally seen army tanks rolling across the street with soldiers with machine guns in front of me. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just saying that that's not a comparison whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, in Ireland, our police force don't even have guns, okay? Yeah. And of course, but at the same time, new people coming to our country shouldn't have to put up with that other kind of crap either. Absolutely not. Yeah. But a little bit of comparison and a bit of hindsight is definitely worth it as yeah, well. And yeah, and then it, it's like, of course, we get frustrated when under I understand people. So let's say you get your phone stolen here somehow. This happens, you know. My phone was stolen out of my yeah. hand in Dublin a few years ago. Yeah, I'm and Irish. Then, <laughs> you know? And then you go to the Garda, and the Garda says, oh, "Yeah, we're gonna look into it," you know. And they never do. They, I mean, they mm. could do, but whatever. And then, of course, you get frustrated. You want, uh, you know, uh, a solution for your problem. But come on, you know. Uh, yeah, like I mean, I'm, I have to say, it doesn't matter what country you go to, no police force is gonna say, "I'm gonna find your mobile phone." Your mobile phone yeah. It's they're gonna say tough shit, yeah. and you need to get a new phone. Yeah. <laughs> Like, unless you're really lucky. Yeah, that's true. Like, I don't think the Garda should be, you know, p 
like you know it's like oh well you're not helping me to find my phone it's like man it's a phone like yeah. deal with it just just keep, move on you know yeah. um if, if if you could find it great but come on yeah yeah and also like sometimes people track the phone and it's like in this big apartment complex and oh like, yeah yeah because you're going to get yeah get in there <laughs> they won't mind yeah yeah have the eggs ready yeah <laughs> That's true. Yeah. A lot of eggs to own that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have an egg around. battle. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I think. Oh, I just, yeah, there's, there, 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 like, I have to say, there is something, like, I have learned how to relax a lot more, but there was a lot, lot of times I used to read some stuff online that would be said about Irish people. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's generalization, you know? Yeah. It's like thinking that we're all that we're all alcoholics and we all just smoke and we all we do all we eat is like fish and chips and potato crisp sandwiches and all this nonsense i've never had a potato crisp sandwich in my life you know it's like (laughs) to to, to get to know us you need to be with us you know i worked somewhere where they they said oh it's potato sandwich day or something like that well, that's and we had yeah. to try. Well, that's a novelty. <laughs> if it's Tato Sandwich Day, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. In my, growing up as a kid, I had a lot more options to eat than Tato crisps. <laughs> but yeah, I do love Tato crisps. I was actually going to bring you a bag. Of, uh, I forgot to do it. I was going to bring you a packet of Tato crisps when I was in the shop, and then I forgot. I was <laughs> so sorry. Okay, I'll bring you. I'll bring you a peace offering next time. Yeah, I should uh, yeah. give you some Brazilian food. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, imagine you know, if he comes here and then, oh, let's try yeah. all this. this Have you ever tried food. Pau de Queijo? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I saw you. I was watching these yeah. uh, EW videos today. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know. Yeah. And then you you used to say Pau de Queijo, Pau de Queijo. Now you say Pão. Now yeah, uh, I'm getting very bon. Yeah, Pão. Yeah, pão, Pão. It, it was like I couldn't say Doin Down. Doidão. Now I can say doin down. Doidão, yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Like right? <laughs> first like doin doin boy. <laughs> and uh I saw you showing your village there in Rush. Rush, yeah. By the way, I get I got this stand. It's a, you can't see anymore. It's beautiful. In in Rush. No way. Yeah, I was there this weekend. Ah, no way. We on the beach. Yeah. Brilliant. South Beach. South beach. Oh man, I live right beside yeah. the South Beach. Yeah. It was good, you know, like um It's a beautiful I, beach. Man, so yeah. so. It's very long. <laughs> so so. Very know, long. So so. No, it was it was good. It was yeah. good to stay there. I saw this kite surfing there. Yeah. You know? Lambay Island. Yeah. The Lambay. You know, I just saw I should have seen that video before I went there. Mm. You know. Yeah. Because then I would observe more. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Mm. It's 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 kind of I used to get really frustrated because I, I, I would I would say I'm from Rush, you know, and I'm like, it's like, where's that? It's like, it's in Dublin. It's like, but it's not. It's like, yes, it is. Yeah. It's like, it's in County Dublin. It's like, if you're from Bahia, just because you're, you're just because you're not from Salvador doesn't mean you're not from Bahia. Yeah. It's the same, like my town is with, like, because Dublin is also, as you know, it's a standalone county. Yeah. So Rush is, a, Rush is a town like Sagart is or Swords or... Fair view. It's 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 a village or a town. You know, it's yeah. the same thing. And it's very near. It's, it's like very kilos. close. Yeah, but like I used to get really frustrated that people never knew where it was, and I'm like, oh, you you need to know it. It's like really quiet and it's cool. And now I actually like it that way because I see some beaches in the last few weeks and they're getting destroyed. Well, with uh, 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 rubbish. Yeah. And like I seen some of the things that were happening in Sutton and all that kind of stuff. Oh, but that's yeah. crazy, man. You know, yeah. like uh, that fight. Did you see the fight? Mm, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, and Braz- yeah. Brazilians were involved. Of course, well. of course. But, <laughs> no, but it was like uh, I didn't understand that fight. It was out of nowhere, and yep. then they started, uh, you know, just running after each other, and then yeah, Garda came. Mm. Yeah, you know. Very uh, yeah, I did. I, I'm, I'm too old to understand why all the well, why all this kicks off. Like when I was their age, I was already playing drums in a rock band, yeah. and it was me and my friends just staying in a garage learning how to play Metallica and corn songs. Like you know that 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 was that was just me. I, I was a quiet kid. I like kicking a football. I like going to the cinema. I love playing music. I had no interest in hitting people or punching people or I'm I'm just a very peaceful kind of person. I've never hit anyone in my life and yeah. I hope I never have to yeah. either. 
I've it's, been hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> no, no. No. Actually, I've been hit only in my belly. Oh, once. okay. Yeah. When I was a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> but you are a countryside kid. I am a countryside at, kid. At the yeah. same time, it's Th- Dublin, but... It, exactly. Know. It's the countryside of Dublin. Yeah. Exactly. So in, in a roundabout way, I'm kind of happy that people don't really go to my part of Dublin either yeah. because we can live a, re- a pretty peaceful life because the community council that we have in Rush, they're amazing people and they are always painting the the gates and they're always mowing the lawn and they're picking up rubbish yeah and, and, and they there, don't need that kind of crap there is the the beans in the on the beach that's right yeah and take uh, three pieces of plastic away a day and stuff like that yeah the beaches yeah i mean i i, I really liked that video that you know you're showing rush because like you understand about the history and yeah. then you say oh this lambe yeah uh, and the agriculture and yeah you want you you explain a yeah. lot you know yeah. what's going on it was an honor to do it. It was really cool because Ma, for me, Dublin at that stage, she was living in Rush actually for a little while. And her idea was, well, I'm living here, but I know, don't know anything about the place. So let's tell the people on E Dublin about it. And uh, it was a really good response. And a lot of Irish people were sharing that video as well. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, when Irish people start sharing my videos, that's when I get really like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Because I'm always really self-conscious when I when I talk about Irish culture or Irish history that there's always going to be Irish people in the back going, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but do, you, do you get hate? Um, haters? Not so much haters, no. No. Um, I would get, like, I, I'd get one or two Irish people who, like, comment on some of my reels and tell me that, like, what I'm talking about is wrong. But when in actual fact, if you go onto Wikipedia or pick up a book, yeah. I'm actually right. Yeah. Um. I I made a reel a couple of months ago where um I was talking about the Wellington Monument in the Phoenix Park, the the, the big uh, monument there, and I was talking about that it was built by a man from Dublin called Arthur Wellesley, and he was the Duke of Wellington who defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo, and that's why it was built. And I'm just giving the history about it, and. Not on Instagram, because on Instagram, the, the, it's a much friendlier people. But on TikTok, <laughs> yeah. fuck it. I uploaded it, and there's these Irish people calling me like, uh, there's, 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 a sl- there's a slang phrase in Ireland called a West Brit. So like British, like Brit is slang for someone who's from Britain. Yeah. And sometimes uh, sometimes people from Dublin are called West Brits because they're, they're, they're seeing that their way of life is maybe a little bit more, more like sympathetic England. to England than the rest of Ireland. Yeah. So like these, these guys call me a West Brit because I was explaining about a, a fucking monument in the middle of the Phoenix Park, you know. But were you pro Britain no, in this? No, not at all. I was just, <laughs> I was just explaining the history. Uh, there's, there's, there's just, there's a set of Irish guys out there where if you're not talking about the Wolf Tones and the 1916 Rising 24-7, then you're just a plastic paddy, a, a watered-down Irish version of yourself, like, you know, yeah. which is absolute nonsense because to understand history and to appreciate history, you have to talk about every kind of strand of history. Mm-hmm. It's it's all very convenient for people to just focus in on one strand of history and they'd be surprised from some of the things they might read about their so-called heroes yeah. How, where some of their sympathies lay in the past as well. But no, wouldn't get haters at all, actually. But um, how, no. How did you get interested in, in history? In history. So when I was a kid, I was when I was eight years old, they assessed my reading ability and, they, and, and my parents were told that I had the reading ability of an adult. I, I just, uh, yeah, like I was good at mathematics, numbers I'm good at. But when I start throwing in algebra, I'm like, oh, here, this is crap. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I really loved reading books. I loved drawing. I loved like sketching. I haven't sketched in years, but my, th- there used to be this um, magazine on the TV that was advertised and it was called Discovery. And it was a British company, but they would have this little pack where like there'd be a magazine about a character in history. And then there'd be like, um, like if it was about Elizabeth the first, there'd be like a ship, a cardboard ship that you could make from 400 years ago. You get your glue and your scissors and you construct these ships. And I absolutely loved that. And I started to buy magazines about, you know, Queen Elizabeth the first and then Michelangelo and then 
Neil Armstrong and all these kind of people. And I just started to get crazy into history. Even when I was in a, like when I started out playing in rock bands, the books that I would, uh, that I would buy would be autobiographies about Jim Morrison or Kurt Cobain or Jimi Hendrix, wanting to know the history yeah. about them. I, I, I just have this thing in my head where I, like, in order to know how we operate today, it's important to learn from what we were doing yesterday. So that's my philosophy. It's like, it's all well and good saying, okay, we're here now doing this, but what, what were the steps that led to that? It's a part of my brain. So I, I, I was just always that way. And to be honest, Felipe, I did not touch history for years after that, man. I didn't touch it for years. I, I fell back into it by accident. I had a job about eight years ago where they asked me to... Uh, work as a tour guide in, in, a, in a historical house near my near Rush in a place called Dunabate. It's called Newbridge House and Farm. If you guys are watching, get out there. Out of it's, the blue. They it's, said, yeah. So. Well, what happened was, <laughs> there's a little story behind it. So I hope everyone over is over 18 watching this. Or if they're not, probably they maybe are. they probably all believe in a, a, a magical man at Christmas time. Yeah. So if there's any children in the room watching this on YouTube, guys, probably I'm going to give you three, two, one, three, two, one. So Santa Claus. Yeah. My uncle got a job as Santa Claus inside this historical you. house. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was Yeah, you. it's actually me, yeah. <laughs> My uncle got a job as Santa Claus in this historical house. Mm. And uh, it turned out they needed another Santa Claus because yeah. things were getting busy. Yeah. So <laughs> I got a job as Santa Claus. And then the guy, oh, the manager God. said, hey, you're really good with people. Do you want to go and uh, and uh, work as a tour guide with us full time? I was like, yeah, okay, cool. All right. <laughs> and uh, that's what reignited my passion again. Yeah. Learning about these people from 300 years ago and then well, just researching and researching. What's the name of this place? Uh, it's called Newbridge House and Farm. Newbridge, Newbridge. House and Farm. It's in Dunabate in I County Dublin. It's beautiful. It's the second largest park in, in Dublin, apart from the Phoenix Park. It's huge. Really? Yeah, it's 360 acres. Are there deers in there? There is deers, actually, yeah. yeah. And there's um, also a big farm where you, really, you get to see, like, there's all sorts of ducks and sheep and lambs and rare breeds of, of cows and all this stuff. Oh, it's beautiful. Do we have to pay to get in? Y yeah, there's a little, I'm yeah. not going. <laughs> <laughs> Cheapskate. <laughs> I can tell them, hey, I worked there five years ago. I get Felipe. Let, let him jump over the gate. But um, okay, so it's yeah. well worth it. So it was, it was as an adult in my thirties. It from started Santa again Claus. from Santa Claus to tour guide to researching about my tour script to just being really, really in, like because it, it kind of coincided with the E Dublin thing. All this, I got that job around the same time as the E Dublin thing. So I kind of thought, wow, I'm starting to get back into history and I'm on, I'm online and I'm looking and going, there's not a lot of actual facts about Irish history for people who are coming here. Yeah. But I've noticed in the last couple of years that the Brazilian pages on Instagram, they've actually changed a little bit. And there's a, there's a good few of them have thrown in some of the things. I'm, I'm not saying, oh, I'm responsible, but certainly... Like I, I might have been a little bit responsible for certain bits of like of pages changing where they're talking about facts about Ireland or did you know about this part of Irish history? Did you know about that part of Irish history? And that's much better because when I first started doing it, it was all about teenagers in tracksuits and eggs and Cliffs of Moher and Temple Bar and that was it. Yeah, but uh, Irish history is so rich, man. Huge, man. So like uh, from the Vikings, crazy people, Let, let's be honest. Of course. Because today, nowadays, it's hard to be in Ireland. <laughs> let's say in December, it's hard to be, to be in course. Ireland. Imagine how many thousand years ago yeah. these guys came here and said, oh, you know, it's a good place here. Let me just settle down here. Well, it was colder in Scandinavia where they came That's from. That's true. It was it's like a Ireland was for warmer them. for them. Yeah. yeah. And you also have to remember, mm -hmm. if, if you're from a period of history where, um, you know, temperature doesn't matter. You're like, we're of, we're of the generation where we have options for heating. Yeah. Oh, I'm warm. Turn it down. Oh, I'm cold. Turn it up. Back then... You just survived, you, you were a human, but you survived with your natural surroundings. Yeah. You wore 
like cow skin. You 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 made fires. You know, yeah. you, you didn't think about how warm or cold it was. You know. No, you 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 do something to change this environment. Yeah. to make it better. Yeah, at that time. <laughs> and yeah. they did. Yeah. Well, the Vikings were the first modern settlement of 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 uh, of, of Ireland. But w there were people before. Of course, the Vikings. there was. Yeah, there was. There was. Yeah, there was. There was Irish people, um, stretching back to. Oh, like 5,000, 6,000 years ago. I mean, the Ice Age um, was here about 10,000 years ago. And when the Ice Age, you know, when that started to thaw away after a few thousands of years, um, you know, after it thawed, like after, after the Ice Age thawed away, Ireland was its own separate island entity. But before that, there was sufficient amount of ice between what's now modern Ireland and modern Great Britain or the UK to cross. People could yeah, cross. Yeah, you could cross over these uh, these ice sheets. Yeah, yeah. So you could you could walk over to Ireland. Oh my and God. then over time it started to melt. Uh, but these people and their generations were there anyway. Yeah. And they say a, a lot of the time, you know, when people always talk about Irish people, it's like the red hair. Believe it or not, they say that the origin of red hair comes from northern Portugal and northern Spain, the, the, the Galicia area of northern Spain and northern Portugal. I think it's Oviedo. And St but um, because when people think about Spain, they think about dark hair. They think about dark skin. Yeah. But you have to remember, um, modern day Spain was, um, was, um, was invaded by uh, Muslims. From, yeah. from the Middle East. That's and that's the people that settled in Spain. So a lot of those people with the dark features descend from the Muslims from the Middle East. So the people who are... I, and I've, I've met people from Spain with freckles and blonde hair and red hair and more direct descendants of them. And also, I, I, I love... I did a DNA test a couple of years ago to see where I'm from, my ethnicity. And I I'm, I'm fascinated by all that stuff. And there's some Irish people that have shown up on their DNA results and it'll say, you know, 84% Irish, 7% Scottish, but and then there'll be a little percentage saying Iberian Peninsula. The Iberian Peninsula, of course, is there by Spain and Portugal. So, the so there's still hair. a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they say. But it, it, it's amazing, man, how, how people could survive at this time. Like, of course, you know, yeah. the weather, yeah. it, it's... Yeah, as you're saying, people adapt. Yeah, you adapt. Know? Yeah, they were human. Yeah, but it's like, why would I build a castle <laughs> <laughs> to protect this way? Like in New Grange. Yeah, uh, I, I, this monument, the, not a monument. This, this, yeah, this construction there, this mm -hmm. building there, it's there for five thousand years. Yep, at, three thousand five hundred BC. Yeah. yeah, as old as the pyramids. One, or, yeah, it's it's. I think it's. I think it's either 500 years older than the pyramids or 100 years, but it's 100 years of Stonehenge, 100 years older than Stonehenge, I'd take it 500 than, than the pyramids. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And the the stones, they didn't it's come not, from that region. Yeah, it's not natural. It's not native to that area. It's, 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 it's granite stone, which is the nearest from where we are is in the Wicklow Mountains. And then... The other side is up towards like Carlingford or the Mourne Mountains in County Down. Yeah. So they had to bring these stones over many, many years. Um, by river? Probably. By river. That because the New Grange is right beside the River Boyne. Yeah. So they reckon that that's how they would have brought these beautiful granite stones up the River Boyne. And also, if you, you know, the. Um, so, so, so the um, the river next door to it is called the River Boyne, and a lot of our place names in Ireland get its origin from the original Irish place names. So Dublin was Dublin, Cork was Corkig, Galway was Galliev, Belfast Belfast. Same with the rivers. So the River Boyne, its original name, well, it, it, or sorry, its name in Irish is Boyne, Boyne, and uh, the Irish word for a cow is bow, B-O, father, the little accent yeah. above the O. That's, that's why that burger place is Bobo. Yeah, right? Bobo's, cow cows, yeah. <laughs> Cattle. Yeah. Bring some water for... Aye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so Bobo, the, yeah. cow cow. Yeah. <laughs> and also they say because the guys that were building Newgrange, they were observing the stars, which was then called the Milky Way. Yeah. And cows, milk, bow, boinia, boin. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So the Milky Way, yeah, bow, yeah, cow, milk, what comes from a cow? 
Yeah, and what's the Irish word for milk? Bonya. Bonya. So bo, boinya, bonya, Milky Way. Yeah. So that's where they say the, the they, way. What's way? So the Milky Way is the name of the celestial body that no, we're. No, no. Yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah. way. How do you say this in Irish? Oh, I'm not sh too sure about way, but the 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 the, the main word would be milk, though, which ah, is okay. bonya. Bonya. Bonya is the Irish word for milk, and then cow is bow. So boinya or bonya. Yeah. And that's what they say that's where some of the origins of it comes from. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have sparkling water. We have sparkling that's water. Okay. That is fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's, that's fine. That is no problem. Water's good. Yeah. Yeah, so Newgrange is fascinating. I could spend every day no. up there. I recommend for people who are watching this in Ireland, yep. go to Newgrange. It's, uh, it's an amazing drive as well. And besides that, there is these uh, extraterrestrial things there. <laughs> oh, yeah. The circles. Yeah, the circles yeah. there. The... They say some of that was down to hallucinogenics. No, but tell me, what's the explanation for that? We'll never know. We'll never know. Some people think because <clears throat> Newgrange is basically... It's so much. So basically, the, the box up above, when the sunlight shines through and on the shortest day of the year, yeah. the passageway illuminates and that creates... Sorry, so the signification behind it is that that's the ending of the darkest days of the year and the beginning of new life, new birth. Mm. And also, they say that the layout of Newgrange is the exact same as the human female reproductive um layout is layout it? yes yeah okay. because you've got the the passage yeah then but you have the, the passageway yeah well the light um <laughs> use your imagination yeah. on yeah. that one <laughs> <laughs> so they say that you know the 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 circles with the the various spirals on them that signifies potentially rebirth or the eternal circle of life which which coincides with this conversation of potentially Newgrange looking like a reproductive yes. map of the female anatomy. And um, other people say it was just a bunch of early Irish people on a lot of drugs. And they were, they were mushrooms and they were seeing what they could see. They were seeing stars and they were etching it. But man, that's a very tight corridor <laughs> that you gotta... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, but... See yeah, like we were passing there, and me and Carol, and then they were like, uh, the guides, the tour guide said, oh, "Look, if you are prone to be claustrophobic or something, you should be on the way back, because if you're afraid, you know, just run back." Or that's something. right. That's right. And I said, you know, that's bullshit. You know, I'm yeah. just gonna go in front. But when I'm walking there, it's yeah. like, oh my god! Oh, it is it's so so claustrophobic. Yeah, you know? and it's airtight. There yeah. has not been one bit of moisture inside that building for five thousand years. And oh, the, it's better than the houses today. Then. It is way better. <laughs> There's damp rolling down half of the walls in 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 the world yeah. now. But the thing about Newgrange as well, Felipe, is it's only the, the tip of the iceberg. You have Nout and Doubt that are the two other ones that are in close proximity. There's up to, I think there's over like 100 unexcavated passage graves. I'm not too sure of the exact number, but there's plenty more Newgranges underneath the... Undiscovered. Un undiscovered that we don't have the budget for. You know, so the Irish government, they, they don't want to just pump in lots of money for all this endless excavation archaeological work that'll probably cause problems with some of the farmers there, some of the local people, but there's lots and lots. And they discovered more a few years ago. There was a man called Anthony Murphy from Drogheda, quite close to Newgrange. And he is obsessed with all things mythical Ireland and mythology and, and, and passage tombs. And he put a drone up in the air and did a land survey over the area near Newgrange, and they could see the outer lanes, sorry, the outer lines of more passage graves that they'd never discovered because it was a really particular hot summer a few years ago, and the grass burnt off to allow to see this circle yeah. surrounding. But Newgrange was rebuilt. Yeah, to an yeah. extent, yeah. Um, 
the the um they always the, the, it was always known that it was there 400 years ago when it was first the first modern version of it was was first unveiled even the people then the farmers or the local uh, planted Protestant landlords that came over with, with Oliver Cromwell, etc. They knew to stay away from it. Yeah. They were very superstitious people as well, very God fearing people, yeah. and they stayed away from it as well. Much like the Hellfire Club up in Dublin Mountains, you know, like people would just stay away from there to get like a weird feeling about it, you know. But I have a weird feeling about the Hellfire Club. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Hellfire is weird, man. Yeah. And I bought an awesome book about it as well, because yeah, yeah there's a whole there's a book about it because. There's no solid proof, but they say that's that the really rich sons of the richest politicians in Ireland in the 1700s all would drink in the Hellfire Club and they'd play card games and they'd like like they'd worship the devil and they'd burn cats and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But during the pandemic people were going there. Yeah, yeah. Parties. It was it was like the best campsite in Dublin. <laughs> and I seen all like I even seen on my Instagram all these Brazilian people just <laughs> going up to the Dublin mountains to camp up at the Hellfire Club. I'm like, yeah. guys, do you not know anything about this place? Yeah. It's That's weird. freaky shit, like, you know? Yeah. Imagine, and then something happens, and then it's like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't be it's, there. It's like the it's like the Dublin version of Blair Witch Project, you know. It's like, True. it's I would interesting. Yeah, I would not sleep up in the Hellfire Club, no way, because <laughs> because they say because going back to that's actually related to Newgrange yeah. because when the man who originally built uh, the Hellfire Club, um, he the stones he used. He apparently disturbed a passage grave on the site of Hellfire. So Newgrange is known as a passage grave. And apparently it's cursed because this man um, used the stones out of what was potentially a passage grave surrounding the Hellfire Club. Mm -hmm. So it would be almost like taking bricks from Newgrange and building a stone structure a few hundred years ago. Yeah. So that's why they say it also adds to its mystique and potentially being cursed aspect and there are there people today that uh, celebrate all these mysterious yeah mysterious island yeah but more so up at, uh, at the hill of tara in in county mead which is quite yeah, close the to Newgrange. Tara is the, yeah the place where the, that's, ETs... yeah, the ancient kings yeah the ancient high kings yeah that's the et shit there yeah <laughs> yeah that, that that's where the ancient high kings of ireland would have been yeah bialtana and uh, Lunasa, you know, the, the, the traditional pagan festivals. I mean, Halloween comes from Ireland. It's originally a pagan festival yeah. to celebrate the ending of uh, the, the, the ending of the, of the crop harvest at the time and the beginning of the winter nights. For me, as someone who's not religious, I think that's just much more beautiful. You know, it's like celebrating the ending of a harvest, you know, and then getting into your, your, your winter nights, you know. What, what parts of Halloween today that we think it's fun yeah were like really dark shit before like <laughs> did, did they really burn uh the witches and um, all these things not so much for halloween witches kind of came more part of halloween after it went to the usa hmm. like when 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 halloween was was in ireland the flames were just to do the the, the symbolism was the changing over of the seasons. It wasn't until it went to the USA that it was witches and fire and burning witches. But sure, burning, yeah, witch burning happened. Like, Here you know, yeah, yeah, well, the USA and England mainly. Yeah, well, in, in England as well, well, in Ireland as well, but not as much. It would have been more in England than the USA, like, you know, burn the heretic, burn the, burn the witch. Yeah. But um, how much was left over? Well, for a start, the pumpkin, <laughs> it wasn't a pumpkin, it was a turnip. Like turnip. Certain, yeah, turnip. turnip is that uh, yeah, the, little. It's like a little, in Portuguese is a bobber as well. Yeah, turnip. Yeah, yeah, it started out as a turnip. It's this. We uh, we have the same name yeah, for yeah. the pumpkin. But yeah. it turned out that when the Irish started to move to the USA, it was easier to carve pumpkins. It was much easier to carve. Yeah. So the turnip, you'd be there till Christmas time trying to carve true. So, so yeah. maybe maybe some farmers were lobbying for the. <laughs> yeah. Save the turnips. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened, you know. Yeah. Let's lobby to sell a lot of pumpkins, <laughs> you know. I think that's what potentially happened, actually. Yeah. They're kind of thinking, we're losing a lot of money here. Let's just go on to the pumpkins, you know. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the story of the salmon that yeah. uh, went to... Nobody in the 70s ate uh, salmon in that's Japan. That's right, yeah. You know, and yeah. then 
some Amer uh, some Norway yeah. guy said, you know, let's sell a lot of to this guy. Yeah, and now apparently it's part of the culture. Yeah. 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 And yeah, sure. But um <laughs> Yeah, it's funny how things operate. Like it's funny how when things go around the world, they just change completely. And uh do you do you like this image of uh so What's exported from Ireland? Uh, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Guinness. And uh, you too. <laughs> you too. Um, well, you know, I, when I talk to people about YouTube, people are like, eh, mm. it's, it's normally they don't like Bono because he mm. has this offshore. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In the Netherlands or something. Yeah. I, to be honest, I, I, a lot of the time in Ireland, We, we, we have a nickname for ourselves. It's, it's the a nation of begrudgers. So if you're begrudging, it means if someone's successful, you just wish them all the worst. <laughs> we hate seeing people become successful. We have this in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think you do, actually. Yeah, I think we're very similar in that way. For me, personally, the whole U2 thing, I don't mind. Like... Who cares? Oh, that, that big house that he has there. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get that bastard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I actually passed by that by Bono's house yeah. a few times, and and then I forgot, I for, forgot where it is now. And then I I tried to go back there to mm. check, and then I don't know. You forget. And then I think it's Anya's house that has this big yeah, uh, she has a big castle. Yeah, and apparently, like she has, like people working there as staff and they're supposed to sign a disclaimer of privacy and all this kind of stuff. It's very extravagant. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, very eyes wide shut kind of thing going on, you know, like blindfolds and yeah. But she know. lives there. She like, does. She, yeah. She stays there most of the year. She does. Yeah. She's a very private person. And yeah, very private. Yeah. Like um, her sister, um, Moya mm -hmm. is in an Irish folk group called Clanad, and Moya would be a lot more, She would do a lot more interviews and she'd be a lot more spoken. But Enya was always very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Very, but it's, you know, yeah. it's, I, I just think that, yeah, I just go back to the whole U2 thing. It's just, maybe back in the 80s and the 90s, like in Ireland, everyone was so proud of them. They were like, yeah. they're like, you know, we're, we're such a small country. We don't have anything. And this is what we have to hold <laughs> our on to. Hero. Yeah, our hero. But now the things have moved on a bit in the last 30 years. And also, like, uh, be, like, the younger generation have come through in Ireland. U2 means a, a lot less to them. Yeah. Like, I've got friends of mine who are, like, in their 50s, and they were, like, the perfect age in 1987 for, for the Joshua Tree and all these kind of albums. And to kind of wave the Irish flag around the world. Look at these guys. They're from Dublin, and they're, like, the biggest rock band in the world at the moment. That means more to them as opposed to someone who's 21 And just glued on TikTok for seven hours a day. Yeah, you know, we still have a, a lot of big newer bands as well. On this, Coda yeah, line. like Dermot Kennedy is doing really well. Coda Line, yeah, and like I mean, I all respect to them. I, I wish them all the best. It's not my kind of music for me. It's extremely boring, <laughs> extremely boring. Especially you're big, you're a musician. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again. They're all lovely guys. Like I, 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 they're 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 fantastic. It's just their music isn't my cup of tea. And I know from being a musician that other musicians respect other musicians when they say rather than just saying, "Oh, you're amazing, you're amazing." Oh, what an idiot! Like <laughs> yeah. it's Better not, yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. It's it's not my kind of music. But there's other bands, like in the Irish folk music scene, and they are unbelievable. Like like there's a band called Lankum, L A N K U M. And it's like some of the songs are just so atmospheric and dark. I don't mean dark as in depressing. It's just very moody. And then there's also it must be awful. Oh, oh, it's all <laughs> oh, oh yeah. You can put it on dancing. But it they for me, they're like the great hope of Irish folk music. You know, the, like the new hope. There's other bands like the Merry Wallopers. There's another band, uh, Ye Vagabonds. They're they're two guys and they play acoustic guitar. There's a big folk music revival in Ireland. But Irish music 
it's very good, man. It is. Like, uh, it is. The, the music culture here. Yeah. You come here and then you see, man, someone playing a harp. Yeah, I know. On the street, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, you never see this in Brazil. Never, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, of course, you know, yeah. it's different, different culture. Of but, course. But anyway, like, it's a harp, you know? Sure. It's, it's a... Yeah. Very, a huge instrument yeah, yeah. that makes like a beautiful sound. Yeah, 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 it is. But at the same time, the standard of musicians in Brazil is amazing as well. Like, I mean, I've yeah. there's 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 bands from Brazil that I've um, come across, like Terra Celta and, and these kind of bands. And I look at some of their clips on 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 Instagram. It's like Jesus. It's like these these thousands of Brazilian people dressed in kilts and wearing shamrocks going diddly diddly. I'm like, yeah. we don't even do that in Ireland. Like, you know, <laughs> it's kind of strange, like, you know, but, um, but, uh, no, but the, the music culture here, it's very good. Like, and, yeah. I, and I think people incentivize that as well. Like, yeah, we do uh, actually, we, 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 we have a, we do have an incentive on, on it in Ireland. We kind of promote creativity, whether we know it or not. Like when you're in school here, yeah. mm. do you have to, to, to play an instrument? Do you have to do some art? Um, not really, no, but we, we would have had to learn a lot of songs in the Irish language mm. about like some of our history or we would have learned, we would have uh, done classes where we were listening to tape recordings at the time of some of our old myths and old mythology. Yeah. And we would have been brought to Newgrange. We would have been brought to the National Archaeology Museum. So yeah, we were in a choir and like our teacher would play acoustic guitar and went, then we'd all just join in and sing. But um, yeah, some schools there's more of an accentuation on learning an instrument. And my 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 school there wasn't an accentuation on learning an instrument, but it there it was all about getting your Irishness over in different ways. So, you know, being in the choir and going to the archaeology museum, going to the history museum, all this reading about the mythology, like and actually listening to it on tape. So there's an oral culture as well. So. Yeah, yeah, but I would agree with you actually in that way that there would, yeah, in Ireland we'd have an awareness. Like we, we might not remember a lot of it when we're adults, but we're certainly we're we're, we're brought up with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so because I think we are quite unique. We're a little island on the corner of the west of Europe. Like we're 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 very untouched by continental Europe. Continental Europe is so different to, to us. Yeah, but so well. You have some similarities with the UK. Sure, of course. It's undeniable. Yeah. Even the same ambulance. Mm. Why don't you just change the 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 place where you drive on the road, you know? Change it to the other side. Oh, it's fine. Huh? No, that would cause car crashes. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, Philippe. Don't oh, worry just, about just to piss them off. <laughs> just you to know? annoy them. Yeah. I think it would we'd annoy ourselves more than that. We'd, we'd, yeah. we'd be more crashes on the road than anything else. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. No, there is there. There's big links between Ireland and the UK, and and only a a, a fool would would try and deny them. Of course, yeah, but of course, you were what uh, colonized, colonized for for, for yeah, how many years? Over seven hundred years. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's impossible to. Yeah, it's, it's impossible to not be. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, a lot of our major buildings in Dublin, they're all built. As British projects, Trinity College was built by Queen Elizabeth the yeah. First. Dublin Castle, King John of England. Okay. Um, the set, the the Bank of Ireland and College Green. That was originally the Irish Parliament, but it wasn't a democratically elected one. It would have been an extension of the British House of Commons, where British landlords living here, called the Protestant Ascendancy, would have been uh, in office, but they weren't elected into office because this was at a time when Irish Catholics weren't even permitted to hold office. Yeah. So it would have been a, an extension of the, of, of the British system. Like we had something in Ireland called the penal laws where we weren't allowed to speak Irish. We weren't allowed to practice Catholicism or go to mainstream schools, colleges or libraries. And in, in some cases, Irish history books were illegal until the end of the 19th century. But this tells a lot about, uh, about people, you know, even with all these things, you kept the the language just about you know just about and uh yeah i know it's probably going to die someday because no one's mm. speaking anymore you know well it's but, actually it's actually never been better for the, for the first time in many years because with the internet i've noticed that there's a lot more teenagers um 
and, and, and younger people who have a little bit more Irish because in the last 15 years we started to establish something in Ireland called Gwail School which literally means Irish school and that's where um, how can I say you can um, you, you learn most of your languages through the med- sorry, you, you learn most of your subjects through the medium of the Irish language so whether it's mathematics or history or geography you're learning it through the Irish language like I remember my old job um, we used to have school tours come in. There'd be six-year-old kids, and they'd be talking to each other in perfect Irish. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's it's getting be- it's, it's getting, getting better. And the problem with, with, with a lot of the time is w- w- in Ireland is we're we're too shy or embarrassed to even try. Yeah. Or we're too or we're too. It's like, oh, listen, I'm not in the Irish language frame of mind. I'm in the English frame of mind. But sometimes after a few beers, one or two of my friends. Like not all of them. Yeah. Like we'll speak a bit of Irish together. The problem of the Irish language is that it's impossible to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you read and then you pronounce everything in the in a crazy way. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then, yeah. You, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah it, it is hard. But you know, all, all hope is not lost. It's it's not as bad as it used to be. I think. It's going through a little bit of a resurgence now. I'm not. No, no, no one's gonna be walking down O'Connell Street in the next ten years just screaming at each other in Irish. Definitely not. I think the damage has been done. What about the Iron Islands? The Iron Islands, it's actually pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Like, when I went to the Iron Islands a couple of times, I I had no option but to speak Irish. They they almost encouraged it to speak Irish, really? yeah. So I, have, uh, I was forced to, to make my mistakes again, you know. All the road signs, like, so on the mainland of Ireland, it's bilingual, mm. but in the Iron Islands, it's only in Irish. Mm. Um, like yeah, I like, have to be there. Oh, it's amazing! It's a beautiful place. As it's well. f- absolutely gorgeous. If if you go to Inishmore, that's the main island, and there's a town there called Kilronan. As soon as you get off, there's like if you get the the boat over, um, there's like a place where you can rent bicycles for like twenty euro or something. You rent out the bicycle for a day, off you go. There's a hotel over on the right hand side. Um, and there's also what's called Dun Engesse, which means Engesse's Fort. And it's one of the highest sea cliffs in Europe at the back of the island. And Red Bull would do some of their, their gliding and their parachute and all that stuff yeah, yeah. from that, that island. So Aran Islands is absolutely fantastic. But I remember when I did land there, like if, if you didn't have any Irish, that's fine. But if they were speaking in Irish, I was picking up the opportunity of being brave enough to to speak a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, your Irish must be. It's okay. It's it's not amazing. It's not fluent. My 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 tenses are terrible, but you know, it, I I try. If you don't try, you're never going to succeed. Um, <clears throat> like I remember when I went to, to check in for a hotel, and they weren't sure if they had some rooms available. I was able to like talk to him in Irish about the rooms, and he'd say things like, you know, uh, I'll um, Myra on Willie and August, which means. Mary, have you got any rooms available? You know, so I can understand that stuff. You know, I hope you're saying you, you actually. I did, yeah, 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 yeah. I did, yeah, I did. <laughs> Made that, check. Ooh, yeah, it's all good. Could be something completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could have said, you know, like you know, you smell, and 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 my my feet are smelly, and my armpits are really nice too. But I don't know. But um, basically, I'm a firm believer in. You know, we've got we've never had so much more information in the world. Yeah. It's all out there. And if you have enough of an interest in something, it's never been easier to to learn. To learn. It's never been easier, Felipe. Like we've we've access to anything, everything. The only reason I buy books is because I just get tired from looking at screens and I think things sink into my brain a lot more when I read. Yeah. And I also I, I think it's a good habit to get back into. During the pandemic, I think there was like five books coming to my house every week. Just whatever, order, order. But were you actually reading it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was, yeah. yeah but now I also, see, the way I, I use the books now, it's it's more like a point of reference, mm. more than reading from page one to 400. Yeah. It's kind of like I have an interest in a topic, go to contents. Oh, it's on page 57. I'll get that, you know. Yeah, I'm just listening to audiobooks now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I can't do it. No, 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 no. I get much more of a, I can build 
a mental image when I have it in my head, you know? I yeah. think, yeah, yeah. Let me just ask if uh, people are participating, how are things there in the chat? Yeah. Did did people like to, to learn more about uh, Ross's story? I, I can completely understand if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, send your yeah we have yeah. a lot of people watching and sending messages and questions. Any any question there? Yeah. First, there is a super chat from Marion. Oh, Marion. Marion sent a super chat. <sighs> Marion, you, thank you. Marion, you owe me a beer, by the way. <laughs> I haven't forgot about last year. You owe me about two beers. <laughs> yeah, this, this super chat doesn't go, go to you. Go to to the channel. <laughs> Even more so, he needs to owe me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Marion. Did he send any question there? No, hmm. no question. Just saying that's good in English and he's liking the, the historical explanation so oh thank you guys yeah. yeah thank you uh let me check one question okay this one is good. yeah and um what? okay uh sandrini uh ross the brazilian community is very large in ireland so what do irish people think of brazilian culture do, do they have any knowledge of the Brazilian culture? Of course they do. I, I think Brazilian people are here long enough that, you know, more Irish people are, are beginning to understand it more than, than ever, really. I mean, you're, you're still going to get your, your people going, oh, Pele, hola, como esta, muy bien. Yeah. And you're like, man, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I, I, I know, I can understand that. Listen. But I don't really mind. Yeah, I, like, me, when personally, I, yeah, I no, don't mind. No, I don't really mind. It's like when I went to Brazil, nobody, a lot of people never heard of Ireland. Yeah. I would say Irlanda, and then they go, Hollandia? No, Irlanda. Alemania? No, Irlanda. Uh -huh. Hey, Hollandia? <laughs> so I had the same thing in Brazil as well, where people never even heard of my country. So. Yeah. <laughs> but the first thing people understand but that's okay. is football, I think. Yeah. Maybe carnival. Mm. Yeah, my first introduction to Brazil was when I was a kid. Football. Yeah, that was the <laughs> that was the one and only time ever where Ireland got further in the World Cup than Brazil. Nineteen ninety. Oh my god! When I was a kid, we got to the quarterfinal. We were eliminated by Italy one zero. Uh, Argentina beat Brazil in the last sixteen game. Yeah. Claudio Canigia scored the goal. I I, yeah, I, remember. I don't remember. Well, I was yeah. two. You were two. Yeah, I was. I was nine the day that <laughs> Italian ninety started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But ninety four, I remember, in Brazil won. Of course, I, I was really happy when Brazil won because because Italy eliminated Ireland in the World Cup in nineteen ninety. So I hated Italy, yeah. and when Brazil and Italy were playing in the final, because see. I hadn't seen Brazil win a World Cup or anything like that. They didn't do well in World Cups from the time I was a kid. 1986, I can't remember. I was alive, but I can't remember. 1990, eliminated in the last 16. And then, of course, you were playing Italy, who were my enemies from 1990. So I wanted you guys to win. But I remember staying up and the famous scene of Roberto Baggio, just his head going. Thinking. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, Dunga and, like, the yeah. Brazilian flag and kissing the... I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember... Oh, I don't know what time it was. It must have been about 11 p.m. or something. It was dark in the middle of summertime. Brazil probably was in the afternoon. Yeah, it would have been the afternoon. Yeah, I remember watching that. And then in 98... Actually, I remember... Speaking about football in Brazil, I remember Le Tournois when Roberto Carlos scored that free kick against France. I remember watching it live on, on the TV when, when Roberto that? Carlos scored the free kick. It went around the wall and then curled was... back in. That was a year before 98. It wasn't in oh. the World Cup. It was in the warm-up. Yeah, 97. The World Cup we lost poorly. Well, I I don't think anyone will ever really know what happened in the World Cup in 98. Was, was, was Ronaldo sick? Was he not sick? Because I remember watching before that um... The commentators saying, and we're getting reports that Ronaldo was not in the starting 11. He's not. And then he was, but he, he just did not look like the Ronaldo that destroyed yeah, every team he was sick. He before had that. that. Or yeah, yeah. 
but I have to, I'm really sorry, Brazil, but I was cheering for France in that final because Brazil had won the previous year. And I'm kind of, no, they can't yeah, win I, I, yeah, yeah, I always like the underdog, you know, because it was France's tournament. Yeah. But listen, it, it, that's football. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's, that was my introduction to Brazil, first of all, was football. And also there was a, there was a TV commercial when I was a kid about orange juice. And apparently, like, the guy in the TV commercial was saying, you know, and the freshest oranges from Brazil. And you see this guy <laughs> with a hat and he's, ta- he's on a ladder and he's taking oranges off the tree and he's, he's squashing it. Yeah, yeah. But now they, the oranges here, they come from. Spain. Yeah, of course but, they do. <laughs> yeah. But you well, we, know, we when don't I, grow fruit here anyway. When I see a grape from Brazil, I get very proud. I don't know why. <laughs> Came from Look at field. my grape, man. Yeah. Look at my grape. This banana, normally from Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, I don't know. When I see something from yeah. Brazil in the, you know, in Lido. <laughs> <laughs> you get patriotic when you see something in Little. From Brazil. It was, it was, it was like last week, my yeah. friend from Rio Grande do Sul, he sent me pictures of cans of Guinness in his local supermarket. 16 uh, reals. Yeah, wow. probably per can. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we buy this thing it's so <laughs> expensive man i know yeah imports yeah, yeah. but yeah no I, I i think well for a start mm. like there's so many irish people are like married to brazilian people now and yeah. there's there's irish brazilian kids and all that kind of stuff so the 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 football team in ireland will be very good hopefully in like 10 years it can't be any worse than what we are now oh it's terrible yeah. but i think I don't know. It's like me, me personally. I'm just such a passive individual. I'm, I'm I, I don't like. Yeah, there's so many people now who get triggered by nationalities in a country, and why are people here, and why are people there, and, oh, and you know, I don't know. I'm just such a hippie. I'm just kind of like, where are you from? Oh, cool. Welcome. Yeah. The way you look at it is, if you keep your nose clean and you make a bit of contribution to the country, that's fine. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, that's the feeling I get from a lot of people, mm, to be honest. Yeah, of course. Know? And uh, I don't. Of course, there are some assholes, you know. <laughs> There's <laughs> assholes in every country. Trust yeah, me. You know, but uh, yeah, the feeling I get when I meet Irish people—that's the, the you know good. It, it, yeah. The the way I was saying, like I was I was saying this to someone today. It was like it's hard to find people like Irish people, even in other European countries that mm. are so open and yeah. so similar to, to we. Yeah, us, yeah, sure. You know, to Brazilians. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, the way you even, oh, it's nice day today, right? You know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I go know. to Germany. You, you're not you gonna, won't find you're that. You're not going to talk like that. Yep. Guy stranger. And I can tell you, working in the tourism industry, yeah. I've got a good grasp yeah. of the personalities of people from different countries. Um. Because I remember I heard that a few years ago. Someone said, oh, Irish people are so cold. It's like, wait a minute. You haven't. What, what countries have you been to? Yeah. If you think we're cold, you're going to be running back to Ireland after you visit a few countries you know, yeah. I could talk about, you know? They will. They sure will win. Yeah. But um, there's way more benefits than downsides to the amalgamation of our two communities. Way more benefits. I mean, you know, what's Brazil given me? It gave me confidence to see that I can build this crazy Instagram page and get so much encouragement from people. Oh, I wouldn't have been still doing all this stuff without my Brazilian friends initially. Now, of course, my, as I said, my page is a lot more diverse. Yeah. And I consciously changed my page to make it more inclusive. And even for me, that was a big risk for me. I thought, oh, wow. If I, if I don't start putting things in Portuguese subtitles all the time, I'm going to lose loads of followers and, and things are, are going to go bad. But it didn't happen that way. And people were very patient with me and they understood the transition. And it's fine now. I, I, was, I was really worried. Like I used to, Felipe, like when I used to make my videos with Portuguese subtitles, mm. I used to, I, I, I'd type it out in English and then I'd copy and paste it into Google Translate, copy and paste it into the video editor like InShot. And then I would Google what I said in English and try and trim it to exactly where it should be in Portuguese. 
And then I'd send it to one of my best friends from from Brazil, actually, who lives here in Dublin. He's also called Felipe. And then he would yeah. proofread it. And he's like, yeah, maybe change that to e or o or nome or, 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 you know, and that's how determined I was to and, get information to people. And then someone, what a crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah usually me. <laughs> then, you know, like people don't don't see these sides, you know, that you, no. you are creating something. You want to give your best. Yeah. You know. By the time that reel goes on Instagram, I'm sick of it. I, I yeah. never want to see it again, ever. Yeah. Like my eyes are just, whoo. that's that's currently what I'm at at the moment. I have ideas for reels, I have lots of ideas, but I'm just, when I come home from work, I'm just tired. As I said, I don't get paid to do any of this. So but you do because you love it. I do because I love it, exactly. And thankfully, people are still staying with me and they understand that I work and they know that it's not my full-time job and it's great that people have that understanding. And, But you should get paid, you know. Let's talk to the Irish uh, tourism yeah. board. Yeah, you know? should I tell you. What's the name of the, it's, it's? Oh, it was it was it was a uh, Falcha Ireland and Falcha. board yeah board Falcha, Falcha yeah Falcha Ireland yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you should talk. We should talk about uh, you know the board beer. Yeah, on board and beer, the food board, trying yeah. food, trying yeah, Irish, Irish food. Foods. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because our our food is amazing. Yeah. Because there's always this bullshit stereotype about us that it's just like oh, you know like the potato crisps and the fish and chips. Mm. Our seafood is bloody amazing. Our our wild salmon, our trout, our potatoes, our vegetables. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. You know, oh man, not agreeing so much. Oh, but no. so good. Our meat, it's so good. We we went to Hoth a couple of weeks ago. We bought a lot of <laughs> mussels. Yeah. And Carol think thought like, oh, two kilos. She thought it would be like, you know, man, two kilos we ate the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Not getting a lot of value for money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh it's very good, man. Yeah, no, it's just like I mean mm. As as I said there a few minutes ago, there there can only be more advantages than disadvantages now, you know. And no transition is ever easy. You're you're gonna get people who talk sensationalist crap, yeah, and they love stirring up BS when there's no need for BS to be there. But that's the internet age. I'm just a firm believer in before knowing or assuming about a certain nationality or certain people. Do your own homework, yeah, and you'll be you'll much better in the long run. Um, and, and if you can talk to actual, people, yeah, talk to actual people. Look at the name of my page. Talk to Ross, like you know, yeah, like talk, you know. Can I talk to Ross uh, when I, when I'm in Ireland? Uh, well, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 the message. I remember I told you I got a message from yeah. that area. Yeah, yeah, is it okay if I talk to you when I come to Ireland? Yeah, I have skin, man. I have a yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not a celebrity, like Jesus. It's okay. crazy. What, what? Or the question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me just. Um, Michelle, uh, <laughs> if he has any planning in learning English. What? If he's planning learning English. English? No, oh, I, I never. Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> They're Portuguese? No, not really. No. Like, I, I pick up some. But it goes back to that thing again of uh you don't want to be the I don't know the gringo no joking exactly you know? yeah it's not my thing Oi gente meu nome é Ross eu sou da Irlanda it's like it's just not me Eu sou muito feliz hoje Bem-vindo no meu Instagram Yeah Secret Yeah. I'm too old. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't have the energy for all this. No, I don't want to do all that stuff. And best to look to anybody Irish who's doing it. Anyone can do what they want. It's a free country. Go for it. It's just not my thing. The Portuguese that I pick up is the Portuguese that I, that I just pick up. Um, I'd, lo I'd love to be better. I think I just really suck at languages. Like, But I'm, I, I do. I'm okay. But you understand. I do. I understand more than I can speak. Which is a good start. Like, I can tune into a conversation and I can kind of tell what people are talking about now. You pick, picked up because people like Brazilians are talking beside you mm -hmm. and then you're like, oh. Yeah, and also because of when my, my page started, I go on people's Instagram stories mm. and I read what they're talking about and I hear it. It just, it just comes into my brain. Mm. 
Um, now, of course, some accents are different and some people speak really fast and some people, I, I understand when people are slower. Yeah. But it's the same with English. I'm sure if I spoke slower, yeah. even more people would understand me better. But it's not a burning desire to learn Portuguese, but it's that's not being offensive to anybody either. It's just, it's just not on my radar right now. If I can understand bits, I will understand bits. But as you said, it's more to do with that fact of I don't want to be that gringo provando, you know, speaking Portuguese. You know, just that's just for me. It's it's been done. Yeah, I'm. It's glad. this. Oh, let's let's laugh at the person. You like you're learning how to. It's just. I'm, I'm glad they didn't bring um, a card here with a few words. You know, <laughs> cartão. Because I was thinking, <laughs> see, what could I? You know, what could I say? And then I was doing some research on the internet. <laughs> everyone talks about the same word, you know, like, oh, amanhã. Yeah. Oh, amanhã. I know. And then this, and then like, oh, I, know. I don't want to talk. Yeah, about yeah. That. It's it's another reason why I changed my page because I, I had years of just the same reels over and over again. Five curiosities that you don't know. Number one, number two. It's, oh, God. Again, yeah, you know, it, it's great, and, and people could do what they want, as I said. But for me, it's just because I've been doing it for so long, I just needed to change it up for myself, you know. But, um, you don't have to apologize, not no, like oh, people, no, you know, yeah, it, it's your type of content, it is, yeah, different. It's know? it's it's weird, it's 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 a bit of a niche, mm. it's and, and I like to, to learn more, yeah, about the Irish history, you know. And, it's your thing. It is. Your yeah. thing is not being up. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Yeah. Like you, you barely, on my stories now, you barely even, I'm barely even talking into the camera. I'm just like sharing things like, you know. Yeah. No, but it's good. It's People good. know what I look like. They don't need to see what I look like every day. You know, oh, guys, it's raining. Well, yeah, well, I can see there's rain falling behind <laughs> you. So that, that that's, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna read the last one. Okay. From Cesar. Uh, can he talk a, a little bit more about Brian Boru? <laughs> Brian Boru? Why they used to call Ireland Ibernia. Oh, Hibernia. Hibernia. Uh, so, Hibernia was the name that apparently Julius Caesar gave Ireland and it meant land of eternal winter. And that's why we say that the Romans apparently never visited Ireland. But a lot of the reason is more to do with the fact that they had no interest in, in Ireland. It was too far away. They couldn't be bothered. But apparently that's what Julius Caesar called Ireland, Hibernia, land of eternal winter. As for Brian Baru, well, he was one of the last high kings of Ireland. He... Um, Lost he he won in the Battle of Clontarf in ten fourteen on Good Friday East Easter uh, Good mm -hmm. Friday, but um he went back to his tent to pray to God that he was victorious in battle and he was stabbed in the back by a Viking warrior, and that was the end of Brian Baru. But the people that he was fighting were various Viking clans and tribes, not just from Ireland but also the Isle of Man, also from Scotland. And it was, it was more about power over the island of Ireland because by 1014, the Vikings had been in Ireland for almost 250 years. So they be, the Vikings became an, their own ethnic group in Ireland called Hiberno Norse. And Hiberno comes from the original, from that word Hibernia. So Hi, Hibernia was kind of the name for Ireland once upon a time, I suppose. So Hiberno for Ireland, Norse for Nordic. Mm. So they became this Irish Viking amalgamation. Even me, a thousand years later, when I was talking about doing that DNA test, I'm 2% Swedish and Danish. Oh, and that's that's left over from Viking Ireland. Lots of Irish people, we still have bits of Norwegian, bits of Danish, bits of Swedish. And um, so they, the, the Vikings went from, as we say, raiders to traitors. Mm. So they started to fall in love with Irish girls. They started to convert to Christianity. So by 1014, it was a power struggle for power of Ireland, because sometimes people lazily say that Brian Baru's battle was the battle of the Irish versus the Vikings. That's the lazy 
over historical Sweetman Dobbit, which is just not historically accurate. It's more to do with um, control of the country. So this was an actual battle? Yeah, like, uh, of, a... yeah, yeah an actual battle. It took place in 1014, so 1,009 years ago. But the crazy thing about the Battle of Clontarf is there's no archaeological evidence to be found of it. But from some of the maps and the annals and the stories that have carried through, that it was roughly around the area of what's now modern-day Clontarf, which gets its name from two old Irish words, Cluan and Tarf, which means meadow of the bulls. So that's why people do these reenactments yeah. there in Clontarf. Correct. That's why they do the reenactments for Brian yeah. Baru. Yeah. Brian Baru. Brian Baru, the last, uh, one of the last high kings of Ireland. Yeah, 1014. So there you go. I hope that was okay for you. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, oh, let me thank uh, Gustavo, who sent here a um, super chat as well. And uh, I have a question about this that I remember. Yeah, go for it. Uh, (laughs) Do you know this thing that uh, they say that uh, Brazil got its name from an Irish? Oh, uh, hi, hi Brazil. Yeah. What? What? What the hell is that? So uh, apparently this this island was showing up on the west coast of Ireland Mm -hmm. down through the years. And it was called Hi Brazil. Hi Brazil. H-Y, like apostrophe or hyphen b or a s i l hi brazil yeah. but i don't know how true that is as far as i know brazil gets its name from the from the wood that was pretty much made extinct from the portuguese coming over and using the die off and taking it back to europe but what what was there in this island on this island um apparently it was almost like atlantis it was like one of these like fictional continental places or one of these fictional islands yeah i, I doubt it was samba and um and foho <laughs> but uh yeah. yeah it was it was like it was so it was like almost like a, a like a like a like a myth mythological place mm-hmm. but for some reason it appears on maps and then it disappears off other maps it's yeah. it's it's strange but I have heard about that before yeah this theory it's just yeah a it's just crazy yeah. thing that people yeah and as also as well as that, there's a name in the Irish language, which is Breslin, and that gets its name from the origin of the old Brassel, B-R-A-S-I-L. I, I went to school with a guy whose surname was Breslin, B-R-E-S-L-I-N. Also, one of the most famous podcasters in Ireland um, is a guy called Brezzy. And he runs the Where Is My Mind podcast. It's a mental health podcast. Um, He's fantastic. He's a great guy. And his surname is also Breslin. And then I've I've known people with the surname in Ireland of Brazil. B-R-A-Z-I-L. A A guy used to play football for Ireland years ago. And his name was Derek Brazil. Derek Brazil. Derek Brazil, which is a, a, um, not an amalgamation. It's a... It's 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 an offshoot of the origin of the old Brasil, B R A S I L, which turned into Breslin and then Brazil. But what does Brasil mean? Brasil. Well, I've no, I have no idea what what it means originally. It's it's just it's old Irish. Okay. But it it branched off into the surname of Breslin, B R E S L I N, and then eventually Brazil. The same way Dublin was Dublin, yeah. and Galway was Galiv. It was anglicized. Turn into another version. But Dublin has a meaning, right? So oh, of course, yeah. yeah. When the Vikings were, were sailing into Dublin um, 1,200 years ago. So, okay, there's the River Liffey. But on the left of the River Liffey is another river called the Poddle, P-O-D-D-L-E. And that flows underneath the modern city of Dublin. Roughly where the garden is in Dublin Castle today, off yeah. Dame Street. That's where the Vikings, once upon a time, used to park up their longships, their longboats. There, yeah, yeah. Was there a river? There? Yeah, there was a river there. So it's where the garden is in Dublin Castle, right where the Chester Beattie Library yeah. is, and the Irish word for black is dove, d u b h, and the Irish word for a pool of water is lin, l i n n. So over the years, d u b h l i n n, in medieval Dublin, it was called Difflin, d y f l i n, and then d u b l i n. So originally it was Blackpool. Yeah. Black Dublin, pool. Difflin, Dublin. Man, it's nice. It's nice to to understand. Yeah. Uh, it comes from the old Viking one. name from where they used to park up their longships, their longboats. Yeah, park it in the dark pool, the black pool. And then the Irish, because the Vikings then became Irish, the, the generations of those Vikings would start speaking Irish and then they'd call it the Dublin, on Dublin. 
Nice. So there you go. Pretty cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you mind coming back here to talk only about uh, Irish history? Sure. This kind of stuff? Love to. Yeah? Absolutely love to. It would be my, my so, pleasure. Yeah, it, it, it's invitation on the air, so you can't... Yes. Uh, see, <laughs> see now, guys, you can hold Felipe to it. He said it. It's proof. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, can't, you can't backtrack now, man. Yeah. No. Uh, I'm it, interested, man. It's uh, sorry. I'm just reading the questions. That's okay, but uh, yeah, I'm interested. You know, it's uh, I love the the topic. Yeah, I love it too. So, As I said before, to understand where we are today, we have to look at yesterday. That's true. Should I read one more, or not? <laughs> okay. Walk uh, for the road. Yeah. One. Okay. Did you learn Galileo by then? Wait. Oh, okay. Did you learn Galileo by Declan O'Rourke? No. At school? Galileo. By the time I left school, Galileo by Declan O'Rourke wasn't even written yet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm 42. <laughs> Galileo was released, I think, in like 2001 or something like that. So Galileo by Declan O'Rourke was... Um, so, it, it's, it's, so Declan O'Rourke, first of all, his brother... Was it uh, was it in, like in a boy band in Ireland? Like it looked like an Irish Backstreet Boys or something like that. And my sister went to college with Declan O'Rourke's brother, so that was like her claim to fame for ages. Oh, I went to I went to Trinity College with uh, Declan O'Rourke's brother. But Declan O'Rourke would have been part of in the in the late nineties and early two thousands here in Ireland. There was a big singer songwriter mm. breakout. So there was Damien Rice. There was Damien Dempsey. Um, Rice. Is I, 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 yeah, yeah, he's from Kildare. Also, um, that song's a Declan little... O'Rourke, all that good stuff. Yeah, that so uh, songs a little boring, right? Can't take it's my eyes off you. you. Can't take and my... then you get annoyed in the middle of the song. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off. To tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that stalker song. P pretty you much. Know, I can't take my eyes off you. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like like the police. I've been watching you, you know. Yeah. Every breath you take. Yeah. But I seen Damien Rice perform that album in total when that album had just come out, and that was really cool because you could tell there was an atmosphere building around him at that time. Um, Lisa Hannigan, who went on to have a really good solo career, she was the girl doing the 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 female role in the song. She was like the, the call and response vocals. And she was she was amazing in that. But going back to Declan O'Rourke, Paul Weller, the really um, renowned English song, singer, songwriter, he said that Galileo was one of the best songs he ever heard. Yeah. Um, I, I have no idea about this. Song. To be honest, I've only ever heard it three or four times myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, you, it is nice. I have but, listened to it. Yeah, but that, that's very specific. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Galileo by Declan O'Rourke. Wow, who Galileo. Sent, who sent the question was Carolina Machado. Give me the Machado. same name of my wife. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Carolina, are you actually typing these questions yourself? No. <laughs> 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 that's a very okay. specific question as well yeah. yeah thank thank you for that yeah okay so thanks for us it's been a pleasure very Felipe. good thank you so much my no, friend very nice to meet you finally you know? yeah we've been flirting with each other yeah, for so long talk, you know, yeah 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 it's like but, will i won't i <laughs> yeah. but uh very good and maybe and let's do the the Irish history. One. That's yeah. If if you guys want to know, yeah, let us know in the comments. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. it'd be great to come back. Um, thanks for giving me a new platform. Um, your podcast has done really really well, and yeah. it's going really well, and it has a huge audience. So thank you so much for thank allowing you. me to be part of that and spreading more Irish nonsense to you guys. Yeah, thank you for your kind words. I know Seriously. the studio is pretty hot, pretty hot today. <laughs> But uh, I'm even pinker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, don't forget first. Don't for oh, don't forget to hit the like button. All right, and uh, if you if you're new here, just uh, subscribe to you to our YouTube channel to Boulder Podcast. Okay, and follow Ross on Instagram. Yep. Talk to Ross is the handle. Talk all, to Ross. Yeah, talk to Ross. Easy. All down below. Yeah, very, very easy. And on YouTube, you I'm, on, I'm YouTube on YouTube channel. as well. My YouTube is a bit different. I haven't touched it for a long time. My YouTube was, was more about music reaction videos. It was more my music side of things. Just, uh, you know. So where I'm talking about music. So uh, Keep producing if you can, if you yeah, want. Yeah, absolutely and, will. Uh, but Instagram, I'm more, more active, yeah. 
Very good, and good luck. Thank you, Felipe. And, uh, say goodbye to this camera there. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye to this camera there. Bye guys. Have a good evening. <laughs> Muito obrigado e tchau. tchau. <laughs>